to quickly review, in the last two chapters we had taken a look at programming in patterns into the step sequencer, as well as looking at how to build a song from those patterns using the playlist window. In addition, we also had a look at how to record audio tracks directly into the playlist window. What we are going to do next is to spice up the patterns a bit by demonstrating some of the perimeters and functions that can be found in each of the channel settings. To open the channel settings, you only need to click on the channels button. A new window will appear displaying some of the various channel settings. The settings are divided into several tabs. To change the settings that are shown, click the desired tab. A sampler channel type will allow you to select from the sample tab, instruments tab, miscellaneous tab, and the functions tab, while a synth channel will allow you to select from either the plugin tab, miscellaneous tab, or functions tab. Let's begin with the sampler channel and the sample tab. This tab will allow you to make settings to alter the FL Studio's playback of the sample. From here you can do such things as apply time stretching to the sample, control the volume levels and start and end times of the sample, apply and adjust crossfades, as well as do some other functions to enhance the sample itself, such as real-time removal of any DC offset, normalize the sample so that the peaks are at their highest possible volume, or reverse the sample so that when triggered it will play in reverse. You can also reverse the polarity of the sample, which can give the sample the appearance of further width. You can also have the sample fade from the left speaker to the right speaker. This would be good for longer samples. Drum or percussion samples may not benefit from this as the sample is short in nature. And lastly, you can swap the left and right channels with the click of a button. Moving on to the instruments tab, the instruments tab is where you can apply filters and modulation to the sample to further tweak its character. And as a bonus, there is an instrument keyboard located at the bottom of the window to allow you to quickly audition the changes you make. From here, we can control the envelopes of the samples. Envelopes are basically a representation of volume over time. How fast the sound starts, how long the sample is held for, how fast the volume will fade after the sample is released. In addition to controlling the volumes of the sample, there are also envelope filters that can control the cutoff filter, the resident filter, and the pitch filters. The envelopes are adjusted using the six controllers, delay, attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. The nice thing is that there is a great visual representation of the envelopes right above the controls, so you can get a really good idea of how the shape of the envelope looks and how it will affect the sample's volume or filters. I should point out that on the filter envelopes, as well as the pitch envelope, there's an additional control labeled amount. This control will specify how much of the envelope should be applied to the sample. Lastly, click on the TB button if you want your envelope to sync to the tempo of your song. For example, if you have a sample that is one bar in length, then you can use the tempo as your guide to apply an envelope that is also one bar. Next up in the instrument window is the LFO section. LFO, standing for Low Frequency Oscillator, is a way to modulate the sample. Basically, it gives the sample the appearance of movement, such as a filter sweeping through the entire frequency range, giving your sample that sweeping effect. To give an extreme example of the LFO, I'm going to take its default settings and turn the amount knob to its full position. Now listen as I play a sample from the keyboard. As I hold down the note, you can hear the LFO creating a fast, sweeping sound. So let's take a look at how we can change the character of that sweeping effect. If I am to increase the delay time, the LFO will not be applied to the sample right after playback begins. Rather, there is a delay before the sample is modulated. As well, you can hear that the sweeping effect is not continuous. This is good if you want to apply a one-shot modulation to your sample. The attack will control how fast the LFO is applied to the sample. The more attack, the longer the LFO will fade in the modulation. The amount control will control the amount of LFO that is being applied to the sample. The more you apply, the more the effect is noticeable. And lastly, the speed control. This will control how fast the LFO moves. The lower the speed values, the faster the sweeping effect will be. Again, you can click on the TB button to sync the delay, attack, and speed values to the song's tempo. The filter section allows you to determine the filter type 
that the LFO will use to apply, as well as tweak the filter settings such as the cutoff and residence. From the miscellaneous tab, you can control the sample's polyphony. This determines how many notes can be possibly played at one time. If the setting is blank, then there are no restrictions. Increasing the max value will set the maximum amount of notes the channel can play at one time. Enabling Porta will apply a tiny pitch glide when you play from one note to the next. Use the slide control to determine the amount of pitch slide. The root key section specifies where on the keyboard the sample calls home. Anything above or below that key will have a pitch shifting applied to it. By default, the root key will be C5. If you wanted to change the range in which the samples can be played from, simply click and drag the orange root key on the keyboard to set the range. Now only notes played within that range can trigger the sample's playback. The last tab, the Functions tab, has a lot of goodies to add shine and character to the channel. The first section is the Delay Fat Mode section. From here you can apply a quick delay to the sample, which can add space and fatness to the channel. A great place to use this is on a drum sample such as a hi-hat or a shaker to add fullness to their presence. To apply this delay, increase the feed amount. This controls how much of the sample is fed to the delay effect. Obviously, the more you feed, the more the effect you'll hear. Use the pan to control the pan delay itself. This will not affect the original panning of the sample, just the delayed audio. So a good trick here to get instant fatness is to pan the sample to one side and the delay to the other. The result is an instant doubling which will give you that fat sound. The cut perimeter is where you can apply a cutoff filter to the delay, and the res control allows you to adjust the resonance of the filter. Here you can make subtle changes to the delayed audio so that it is unique to the original and not an exact copy. You can alter the pitch of the delayed audio, which is another great trick to add depth to the sample. Apply a slight amount of pitch shifting to get big results. You don't need to apply a large amount. Control the delay time with a time perimeter. The more time you apply, the longer the delay will be. If you're looking to simply fatten up the sound, then short delay times are better. If you want to create a spacey effect, then use longer delay times. The number of echoes is how many times the delayed audio will be repeated. Again, if you're looking to fatten up the sound, then only a low number of echoes are needed. Another cool function is the built-in arpeggiator. This little function will allow you to build melodic lines by feeding it simple chords, much like we looked at with the piano roll. And lastly, with the channel settings window, at the top there are three controls for the channel's panning, volume, and pitch. These settings are made in addition to any tweaks made in the tabs below. On the right side of the settings window is the FX assignment control. This is where you'd set to which insert in FL Studio's mixer you want this channel to go to. If no value is assigned here, then the channel will be routed to the default master insert. So, in this chapter, we had a look at some of the commonly used perimeters in the channel settings dialog to further enhance the audio within the channels. In the next chapter, we will look at more into the art of mixing within FL Studio using the mixer window to apply effects and other processing.